Our topic is subpectoral implantation of cardiac device. This lecture was given in the device session in EP Track Cardio Egypt 2018. First, allow me to ask you how much you will be disappointed if you have an old patient with congestive heart failure in whom you have invested a lot of effort to prepare and to provide him with the best CRT device and once the patient started to feel improvement, you become confronted with this. Or if you have a young woman with congenital complete heart block in which you just implanted a DVD pacemaker and she already feels much better during her daily activity, but she is also disappointed uh, with the sight of the device showing in front of her chest. What if you have a middle-aged carpenter who recently got a DDD who cannot work anymore due to pains he got every time he had to lift anything with both arms? All this and more scenarios let us feel that the job is never complete until you find a good alternative for all these patients and more. What I am talking about today is not new, but can offer a solution for all these problems or even prevent it. The subpectoral device implantation started with the early, uh, early cardiac devices. The early devices was heavy, bulky, and less polished in its outer design. In 1958, this was the first implantable pacemaker. It was implanted in the abdomen Few years later, with the development of the electronics and batteries technology, the devices become smaller and lighter to be implanted in the chest under the pectoralis muscle. During that time, they had the problem of biopotential sensing. So with further miniaturization, they eventually implanted the devices subcutaneously in the chest. In 1980, and with the implantation of the first ICD, the cycle was repeated and the ICDs were implanted in the abdomen, then later in the chest, under the muscle, then now subcutaneously. The technique of subpectoral device implantation was abandoned not because of its harm to the patient, especially with the development of the bipolar sensing, but because the subcutaneous implantation was easier to the implanter. During the coming few minutes, I am going to reintroduce you to the technique of subpectoral device implantation and to show you how easy and how convenient to you and to your patients. Uh, if you want to get a good orientation about the subpectoral device implantation, we have to know about some anatomical landmarks. We'll start with the coracoid process, which is a process coming from the scapula, just medial and superior to the head of the humerus. Then the sternoclavicular joint, the pectoralis insertion in the humerus, and then comes the pectoralis minor muscle, which is originating from the coracoid process and inserted in the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. Next, the thoracoacromial neurovascular bundle, which is a neurovascular bundle passing on the lateral border of the pectoralis minor muscle. Any disruption of this neurovascular bundle will lead to ischemia and uh, atrophy of the pectoralis major muscle. Then, clavicular head of the pectoralis major muscle, which is originating from the uh, medial end of the uh, medial two thirds of the clavicle and inserted in the pectoralis insertion in the humerus, sternal head of the pectoralis major muscle, which is originating from the lateral border of the sternum and inserted in the pectoralis insertion in the humerus, then finally the deltoid muscle. If we want to get under uh, the pectoralis major muscle, we have one of four routes. First, between the deltoid and the uh, clavicular head of the pectoralis major. Second, between the clavicular and the sternal heads of the pectoralis.
pectoralis major muscle or through the axilla and under the uh, pectoralis major muscle and this is the most cosmotic approach then uh, under the lower border of the uh, sternal head of the pectoralis major muscle for the sake of time, I'm going to describe the technique which we follow in our lab in approaching the subpectoral space. First, we insert the wire as usual in the uh, subclavian vein. Then we have to draw uh, two lines. The first line starting from the sternoclavicular joint to the pectoralis insertion in the humerus and the second line from the coracoid process to the fifth postochondral junction. The intersection of two, these two lines will determine the site of the incision which we will make. After you make the incision, undermine the upper lip of the incision and withdraw the guide wire in the incision. Then you have to look carefully in the floor of the incision you observe the plan of separation of both heads of the pectoralis muscle marked with a thin strip of fascia containing a fatty tissue. And beware of the fatty tissue every time because it's always there. Introduce the tip of any artery or forceps to open the plan, then retract the sternal head down and introduce your finger to do a 90 degree sweep in the inferolateral direction, avoiding the thoracoacromion plexus. You will observe that it is very effortless and bloodless to make the pocket. Now introduce your uh, device. Clute the muscle plan and introduce two figure of eight suture to prevent migration of the device under the skin and to uh, be as a mark when you want to change the battery later on. Now the device is resting on the pectoralis minor and it is covered by both heads of the pectoralis major muscle. If you are lucky and with the subcatecular wound closure, the wound will look like this. If you look at the subpectoral approach in the literature, you, you will find a very small number of studies, including a few patients only. Uh, the biggest of these studies is an Australian registry, which is uh, published in PACE in 2004. I'm going to quote a part of the abstract. In the author's experience with over, uh, over 1,000 initial pacemaker implants and pulse generator replacement, the potential uh, concerns of neurovascular and muscular damage have not been realized. There has been no pulse generator damage from the ribs, serious loculated hematomas, or unusual post-operative or chronic pains. From experience with pulse generator recalls, the replacement the procedure has not been significantly more difficult than with the subcutaneous approach. Subpectoral device implantation. Erosion is completely avoided, better cosmetic appearance, reduced the incidence of device-related pain and reports on reduced defibrillation threshold in ICDs. The procedure of pocket creation is faster with less bleeding. So, in conclusion, in the end of the day, no matter how much effort you have invested for the sake of your patients, complications can make this go in vain. It was said wisely that uh, the friend indeed is the friend on need, and learning and acquiring the skill of subpectoral device implantation can be your best friend. Thank you.